I've been thinking a lot about death this year. Not in a morbid way, in a positive way, in a kick up the arse kind of way. The way that you sometimes need that boot up the backside to make you realise that life is short. The thing that brought this on was I had a shocking experience in January when I was on holiday in Portugal. Every year we visit Portugal and we have a villa out there on a timeshare basis. Villa 950. Next door is Villa 952. And every year we see the couple that live there. They're a man and a woman about the same age as us from the UK. And every year they wish us Happy New Year from the balcony as we watch the firework display over the sea that's put on by the resort every year. And this year was no different. They wished us Happy New Year and we wished them Happy New Year back. The only difference was that this year, three days later, he was dead. And I witnessed the whole thing. It happened in the middle of the afternoon, the day before we were due to return to the UK. I heard noise from the other side of the hedge, and at first I thought he was exercising, because that's what it sounded like. But it wasn't at all. He was having a heart attack. I could hear his wife crying out in anguish, telling him to lie down, while she then called the paramedics to come and help him. It was absolutely shocking. There was nothing that anybody could do. The paramedics were there in minutes, in fairness to them, but then they worked on him as he lay by the pool. I could see everything. It was an absolute shock to the system to see that going on with a man who was about the same age as me. So that's the experience that I had this year that made me think about death, or more importantly, to think about life and how you can live. Because as that poor man proved, life is fragile. You never know when your time is up. You can assume you're going to have a long life, and if you look at this graphic that I'm putting on screen now, which I've created where each dot represents one year of life in a human life that's 90 years, you can see that 63 dots are already filled in. Those are my years that I've completed. There are 27 dots remaining, in theory, if I make it to 90. But when you look at that graphic, you can see that I've finished two thirds of my life already. And that is depressing, quite frankly. There are times when I look at that graphic and I think, crikey, so much time has passed. Where has it all gone? But the good thing is that in theory, if we look at the graphic again, I've got 27 years left. But how much of those years are going to be good healthy years. Years when you can actively do the things that you enjoy doing, whatever those things are. For me, I enjoy travel. I enjoy spending time with my family. I like to get out to Portugal at Christmas and the New Year for a few weeks. It's one of the highlights of my year. And we go up to Scotland in March. The rest of the time we do odd trips throughout the country. And I enjoy that. I enjoy driving my car and getting out in the UK. But am I really going to be able to do that when I'm 90? And if I'm fortunate enough to live longer than 90, like my uncle Archie, he's 94. What is the quality of life going to be like? Really, let's get realistic about this. I'm 63 and I'm suffering with my health a little bit at the moment. If you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know that I'm suffering from a health condition at the moment. I've got gallbladder disease and I'm waiting for an operation. The good news on that front, by the way, is that I got a note from the surgeon the other day to say that uh, I'm on the list still and he's got me scheduled for surgery on December the 14th, four months away. And not just that, six days before I'm due to go to Portugal. Great, eh? Anyway, that's life. These things are sent to try us. I'm sure I'll be fine. Six days after I've had my operation, I'll be heading to Portugal. But back onto my point. How long do you think you've actually got of healthy years? If you're in your 50s, what, what have you got? 35? 40? Who knows? But the point is, you need to make the most of those days whilst you can. Make the most of the years. Do the things that you want to do. Because you never know when you're going to be like that poor man next door to me in Villa 952. I'm sure when he wished me Happy New Year from the balcony, like he does every year, that he thought it was going to be a Happy New Year and a good New Year for him. But it wasn't. So how can you live your life more fully in your 50s and 60s? Well, I think there are three things that you need to look at. And these are three things that I've done. First of all, you need to redefine your relationship with success. If you're still chasing things in your 50s, material possessions, awards, accolades, whatever it is that drives you at that point, if you're still doing that in your 50s, then I would urge you to have a rethink. If there's one thing that I think I did right, it's retiring early at 44. At the time, I wasn't sure because I found it very hard for the first four or five years. But now that I look back on it at 63 years of age, it was 100% the right decision. 
decision. When I was in my 20s and 30s, I was driven by all the wrong things that all young men seem to be driven by. Power, money, cars, material possession, career advancement, the usual suspects, the things that drove me at the time, they were important drivers. I don't think I would have had the success in building my small business if I hadn't been driven by those things. But those things did not serve me well after I retired at 44. I had to let them go. The second thing is you have to live in the moment. One of my favourite quotes is by Buddha. I'll just read it to you. The secret of health for both mind and body is not to mourn for the past, worry about the future or anticipate troubles, but to live in the present moment wisely and earnestly. That's my favourite quote from Buddha. And how true is that? There is absolutely no point worrying about things that have happened. And there's no point worrying about things that haven't happened yet. You have to live in the moment. And not just that, you have to be present in the moment. I mean, how often do you see people when they're with their family on mobile phones, sat in restaurants, scrolling, rather than engaging with their loved ones. I mean, I won't lie, I've been that person. When I was around about 40 years of age, we still had our regular trips to Portugal, and I used to be regularly on the mobile phone in the restaurant. My young son would be there as well. I'd be taking calls from work. Crikey, what, what was I doing? What was I thinking? If I could transport myself back as a 63-year-old to have a chat with that 40-year-old, I won't lie, I'd give him a slap and say, come on, wake up. These times won't last. This is your opportunity to be present, to spend some time with your child. Fortunately, I did wake up. It took a major life event to wake me up. And that was the death of my father 20 years ago when he was 74. It was about a year or two before I sold my business. And that was the wake up call I needed. But who needs wake up calls like that? It wasn't the wake up call I wanted really, even though it's the one that I had. But after that, I changed. I altered my whole perspective about success. I altered my whole perspective about being present. And I altered my whole perspective about what I wanted in life. And I urge you to do the same. The final thing I would advise is that you should live your life with some purpose and intention. Have you ever thought about what your legacy is going to be? Have you thought about what might happen at your funeral? What would be your eulogy? How many people will be there? And what will they be saying about you? How many lives have you impacted? These were the questions I was asking myself when I turned 50. And I came to the conclusion that I wasn't impacting on many people's lives at all, other than my son, obviously. As a father and as a parent, I was impacting on him. But other than that, I wasn't really impacting on anybody. And that's part of the reason why I then decided to move into coaching and advisory. I wanted to help more people, particularly people who are on the path behind me. They're the ones that need the help. I've had the experience from 44 to 63. I've had 19 years on the road and it's actually been a curving road, an up and down road, a road of cul-de-sacs and blockages. These are all things that I've experienced and I've managed to overcome. So now I share my knowledge to help people overcome them as well or if possible, completely avoid them because some of the things that I ended up encountering, they could have been completely avoided. So that's what I'm now doing. It's part of the reason why I've launched this YouTube channel and part of the reason why I create these videos. I don't want people to make the same mistakes as me. I want them to have successful retirements. And if they don't want to retire, I want them to have successful lives. Although I would urge them to think long and hard if they're wanting to continue to work in their 60s and 70s. So to conclude this video, I urge you to think long and hard about the brevity of life. It is fragile. Think about that poor man from Villa 952. It was a shock to the system. Nobody wants to die at that age or under those circumstances. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I know this is a brief video. I've just recorded it on the hoof uh, as I'm sat waiting for my tea. My good wife is preparing me a lovely tea downstairs, which apparently will be ready in about 30 minutes. So I thought it was an opportunity to record this video and share some of the things that were on my mind. I would advise you to watch this video next, which is all about the nine things that I quit to simplify my life and enjoy retirement. Thanks for watching. See you next time.